Praise God. Uh, my name is Winnie. I'm born again this morning. Uh, today is our day, and this is JPRC, and uh, this is what we do. Uh, let me welcome Dilak to take us through. Thank you all. Greetings from the Democracy and Legal Aid Center. We are here as a team. At the Democracy and Legal Aid Center, we promote the rule of law by protecting human rights and enhancing democracy. Today, we are here to conduct civic education after the legal clinic that was conducted on the 27th of August this year, we, we came up with um, topics that we feel we need to share to the congregants and to the entire PCA fraternity. So allow me to introduce my team, starting with the most senior of us. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Wanjiko Ndwati. I practice law in Nairobi uh, in the firm of Wanjiko and Wanjiko Advocates. This morning, I'm part of DILAC. Uh, good morning. My name is Vincent Tanyona. I'm with DILAC, and I'm happy to be here. Good morning. My name is Caroline Anyona, also from DILAC. Thank you so much. At DILAC, we, we aim at fostering dignity. And as at that, today we are, we'll start with a topic on marriages. Let's get to understand, are we married or, or do we presume ourselves married? So please take us through in. Okay. What is marriage? Um, the definition of marriage is that it's a voluntary union between a man and a woman. In either a monogamous union. A monogamous union means there is one man and one woman or a polygamous union, meaning one man and more than two women. What are the various types of marriage? Um, the Marriage Act recognizes um, five types of marriages, but there is also one extra marriage. Um, uh, let me just name them. There is the Christian marriage where people are used to. Uh, there's the civil marriage where um, people go to the attorney general and um, with few witnesses and sign. There's the Hindu marriage. That is That happens when you, uh, you have that Hindu faith uh, between the man and woman. There's the Islamic marriage. The Islamic marriage is um, where both of you um, process the Islamic faith. And the very last one is the customary marriage, where um, there's the issue of dowry, and the marriage is conducted um, through customs of either the man or the woman. But there's also another type of marriage, which is called a common law marriage, where people are presumed, but that is not recognized under the Marriage Act. Okay. Mm. Is there a duty to register marriages? Yes. Uh, there is a duty to register all marriages. It is uh, the Marriage Act uh, specifically states that all marriages have to be registered. Okay. And uh, what are the advantages of registering marriages? Yes, there are various advantages of registering marriages, but um, in this conversation, I'll only deal with three. Okay. Um, the first um, advantage is that... Um, one, there's the insurance aspect, NHIF. If you register your marriage, your spouse automatically benefits from your NHIF. Number two, uh, there's the issue of matrimonial property. Once you register your marriage, now um, the spouse benefits from the matrimonial property. 
And number three, let's say if one of the spouse dies, um, you have the first priority in once you've registered your marriage, you, your, your priority is number one uh, in, in succession. And uh, I believe the process of registering a marriage in Kenya, in this country, is very simple and direct. Mm -hmm. Yes. What if you're in a polygamous marriage? Um, you can equally register your marriage if you're in a polygamous marriage because polygamous, uh, polygamous marriage mm -hmm. is equally recognized under our laws. What you just need to do is that um, you register, your wives are there, um, you have one or two wives, sorry, you have more than one wife mm -hmm. if you're in a polygamous marriage, you go, register, you do an affidavit saying that um, I, you as the man has these two or three wives, and register them uh, before the attorney general. It is recognized. And there are benefits in registering that uh, polygamous marriage in that, let's say the man dies, the three, two or three families are equally, equally benefit once they are recognized by the law. It is well understood, but uh, in Christian, we don't advocate for polygamous. But thank <laughs> you so much, Ajana. May God bless you. Thank you. What can you tell the congregants? Uh, what uh, I can tell the congregants is that um, I know most of us have, from the conversation we had uh, two Sundays ago, most of us have not registered our marriage. One, we should not only register, but first formalize our marriage. Uh, and I'm sure the PCA has those jubilee celebrations. It's good that if you've not uh, formalized, take that advantage, um, one. And if you have formalized your marriage, kindly register. It's a very simple process and it takes little time to do so. Okay. Thank you so much, congregants. You've heard from our advisors. Kindly take caution. Thank you so much. So just to add to what my colleague has just um, addressed us on, um, formalities for registering a marriage is one, you need to know it, it is between a man and woman. The man and woman should be adults, that is, they should be 18 years and above. There should be consent between the two parties. The parties should be in a position, they should be capable of making decisions. So they should be people of sound mind. And now, under presumption of marriages, I would invite our colleague to take us through what the common law dictates and how to go about it. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, the two colleagues have spoken about uh, the types of marriages, and there's something that uh, Mr. Manyona has said uh, is common law. Common law, to break it down in simple language, is what we call coming state. And it's a difficult form of marriage, very, very difficult, because until the law calls you somebody's wife or husband, you're not. Uh, so uh, that is the one who's actually pleading with you to register go and formalize it and register it. It's a very, um, you're, you're not securing your rights as a husband or a wife if all you have is you agreed to stay together. You've agreed to stay together, you have children, you have properties, uh, but uh, you have no, you're not recognized by law. And uh, it is until that moment that either the court pronounces you as husband and wife, you, you are, presuming to be husband and wife, you are not yet. And usually the problems come in succession. So I will add, I will add my voice to what Mr. Anyona is saying. 
let's formalize those unions. It doesn't matter how long you've stayed with somebody. It could be even 30 years, but somebody can challenge that status of husband and wife. So I add my voice to Ms. Anyona and urge you, please formalize those unions.